Greetings Fright fans, coming up next is the first ever Halloween episode of Chiller Cinema. This ran on October 21st, 1999, just shortly before Halloween that year. And the thing I remember about this one the most is that I had just gotten my Vincent Price Apple Sculpture Kit off of eBay. Now this is the very first thing that I ever bought off eBay and I was anxious to show it off on the show so Dr. Gangreen uses it to show kids how to make little shrunken heads out of apples for, uh, for their own Halloween treats. Pretty fun stuff. So anyway, here it is, the very first Chiller Cinema Halloween episode. See if you can see what's in store for me, Nuxley. Excellent, excellent. Let me have your hand. Okay. Doctor, aren't you forgetting something? What? You, I'll give you your money when we're done with the palm reading. The glove. Oh, oh yes, 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 of course. In your hand. Sorry. You have a very strong hand. Yes. 
I'm looking at your lines. You have a very long lifeline. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this means that you will live longer than the average person. Yes! Must be all those Fountain of Youth experiments I was working on a few years back. <laughs> I knew that'd pay off. <laughs> well, I also foresee great success with your television show. Yes, of course, yes! And then, and then I'll rule the world, right? No. But there is a catch. You are linked to one that holds great misfortune. Oogsley! Yes. Your destinies will always be entwined. Is it Oogsley? He always ruins everything. It is okay. I have foreseen this and I have taken precautions. What do you, what do you mean? I have made you a potion. Put it in your lab and it will keep everyone safe and no harm will come. Whoa! This could be it. This could be the missing key, the missing ingredient for once. Perhaps Oogsley won't disturb my, won't ruin my experiments. Thank you, Madam Fortune. Thank you. Okay, viewers, this could be it. The final break that Dr. Gangrene needs. <laughs> and then perhaps I could take over the world, right? Mm. Well, besides, that's beside the point. Anyway, come on, we'll go back to the lab and I'll pick this up on my way out. Thank you, Madam Fortune. Oh, Woo! We're back now. <laughs> Madam Fortune did me right here. We'll just sleep this sitting here and... Hopefully it'll do its business here and I'll hopefully will quit harm himself here in the lab. But anyway, uh, I think that, I think maybe we'll take a look and, and uh, go over some of the mail we've gotten here in the lab lately. Let me find a little bit of that here for you. Just one second. Ah, well, here we are, the first of uh, uh, the letters that were sent in by one of my little ghouls out there watching this program. <laughs> This is great. This is really cool. Check this out. I think you'll like this. All right, here it is. The first drawing. It's from a viewer named Rob. Viewer Rob here. <laughs> nice little cool. He did a drawing for me. If you remember a few weeks back, I sent out a call for you kids to do some drawings, and he did a little drawing here of Oogsley. He looked across the top. It says, "Hey, hey, hey, master, master, hey, can I be on film too?" <laughs> I tell you what, he really captured old Oogsley's likeness here. <laughs> Here's another drawing sent in by another viewer, and uh, this one's labeled unknown, so I guess this must be the unknown artist. I wonder if he's related to the unknown comic. <laughs> anyway, the unknown artist here, Artist X, we'll call him. He did a great, uh, uh, fun little drawing here. Check this out. It's got a mummy and Frankenstein's monster, some lab equipment. It's got all kinds of good stuff going on here. A uh, little busy lab. It looks like it could be my lab here. And last, but certainly not least, we have a drawing here from a little ghoul named Holly. <laughs> and this could be the most frightening of them all. We have some kind of creature here with glowing red eyes and angry teeth. Look at that thing, man. Good night. I wouldn't want it in my lab. Whoa. So, thank you, Rob, Holly, and Artist X. I really appreciate these drawings. They are, they're really good. I appreciate that. They're pretty spooky. <laughs> spooky. <laughs> Good drawings, really. So, anyway, uh, let's see. What was I going to do next? Hmm. I remember now. I was going to tell you guys about how Halloween really got started, all about the tradition of Halloween and what it really, uh, what it really came from. Halloween takes its name from the, uh, the word All Hallows' Eve, which means the day before All Saints' Day. Many cultures have their own Halloween traditions, and several of these influence what we now call Halloween. The main source is traced back to the ancient Druids, who believed that on November 1st, demons, witches, and other evil spirits roam the earth in wild celebrations. They had fun frightening, harming, and playing tricks on the poor humans there. The only way for the scared humans to escape this was to either offer them what they really liked, sweet foods and desserts and such, or else disguise themselves as one of them and join in their roaming, thus escaping their little pranks. That's what they did in ancient times, and this custom has been passed down virtually unchanged to us. Oh, as you can see, it was literally a trick or treat. <laughs> so, anyway, I think it's time we pay a little trip to Earl's Pumpkin Land and go on our little haunted expedition for the night. So, let's get ready, all of us, and we're going to go on over there. Oogsley, get the gangrene mobile ready. Let's go. Green here 
here at Earl's Pumpkin Land. We're here to check out all the Halloween festivities that they've got here this year at Earl's. So let's go take a look, shall we? First off, check out these gorgeous, huge pumpkins they've got here. Bigger than the size of old Oogsley's head, don't you think? <laughs> As you can see, I'm wearing my summer apparel here. It's awful hot, even though it is October. Now, we're standing outside of the kids' play area. Check this out. There's some fun stuff to do. wonderful plaque to the creation of one of my fellow cohorts, the Mad Scientist Union, uh, member number, number, charter member number three of the Mad Scientist Union. What do you think? <laughs> We're here with Tammy. This is Earl, the owner of the Earl's Pumpkin Land. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Earl's Pumpkin Land here. What's going on? Well, this is Pumpkin Land 1999. We have lots and lots of different things for the children to see here. We have Pumpkin Land. We have a straw maze. We have farm animals. We have Buzzy the Caterpillar, which is a great thing for the children. Lots and lots of things and a new baby deer. New baby deer. Well, we'll have to go get that on film here in a moment. Right. Thank you. Thank you. We're here in front of the Boo Barn, one of the new attractions here at Earl's Pumpkin Land. Let's go take a look. Go ahead, Oogsie. This is a uh, one of Barnaby's long lost relatives here. How you doing, bud? <laughs> and now let's take a quick run through the straw maze. Come on. Slowpoke. has a second job here. You didn't tell me you were moonlighting, Barnaby. Guess he decided to take that comedy show on the road. <laughs> And last but not least, they even have a petting zoo, so the, anim the children can, so the animals can pet the kids. No, no, so the kids can pet the animals. Come on, take a look. She's a real kicker. Do she kick? Kick her. Okay. Oh, yeah, she kisses all you'll let her kiss. Continually. Mm -hmm. Her legs come out from under her. <laughs> like Bambi? Yeah. Yeah, she does look just like Bambi. Okay, so that's about it for this trip to Earl's Pumpkin, pumpkin Land. I want to keep saying Pumpkin Pass. They have a pumpkin patch. You can even pick up pumpkins here to take home with you. So come by in Franklin. Check it out. You'll have a good time. We're back now from Earl's Pumpkin Land. I picked up this little beauty there. <laughs> she is a beauty, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, you know, you can go there and pick out a pumpkin as well as playing on the little kids' toys as long as, I guess, as long as you're a kid. You can, you can have a lot of fun there. So anyway, go by and check it out if you're looking for something to do. And uh, anyway, let's go take this up to the attic lab and we'll go carve this baby. How about it? Come on, let's go. All right. Oh. Back here in the uh, attic lab, you might recall this is uh, this is my secondary lab. This is the place where we brought Crocus, 
my mutant, genetically engineered mutant killer toad to life back here a few episodes ago. But anyway, back here in the attic lab, brought my pumpkins from our holes here. Now, set that there, and usually I reserve this for brains and such, but we got a delicate operation going here also tonight. First thing you realize when you're gonna go carve a pumpkin is you gotta have the right set of tools. Now most people prefer precision instruments such as these. So these are some of the precision instruments that you can pick up most places that carry Halloween merchandise. You got things with serrated edges like this. You can get in there and work really fine finely shaped crevices and things like that or you also might need a couple of household everyday household tools such as a knife <laughs> and a spoon for scraping and such of course if there's any doctors out there you might want to consider something like a syringe or perhaps a scalpel <laughs> but not me oh no i uh i prefer something else something a little more exciting something like Power tools! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> now, when you're done, now you have to realize not everybody can be as precise as me. It takes a lot of practice. But when you're done, just put your little candle inside. It should look something just about like this. <laughs> yeah, nothing like a good home craft to uh, get one in the Halloween spirit. <laughs> hey, I don't see any of uh, Oogsley's body parts laying around here, so I guess Madam Fortune's good luck potion must be working wonders now, shouldn't it? <laughs> well, I tell you, it's time now that we pay a little tribute to one of the greatest horror actors of all time. Like I promised you we would at the beginning of the show, Bella Lugosi. Ha <laughs> ha! Bella was born Bela Varink Dezo Blasco on October 20th, 1882 in the small Hungarian, which is now Romanian town, of Lugos. He was the youngest of four children in an upper middle class family. When young Bella was 12, he ran away from his hometown, never to return. Lugosi longed to act, and even and wound up landing small roles in local theaters. He honed his skills until he eventually landed bigger roles throughout all of Hungary. Now, he adopted the name Lugosi, a name which had aristocratic heritage, but Bella later shortened this to just Lugosi. He volunteered for the war and served as an infantry lieutenant in World War II where he was wounded three times and decorated. After leaving the service, he made several films in Germany before moving to New York to seek his fortune. He landed a major role in a Broadway production, learning the role phonetically, and until fate intervened and he was finally cast in the role of Dracula on the Broadway play. Based on the success of this Broadway play, Bella was chosen to repeat this role of Dracula in the 1930 feature film of Dracula. <laughs> Lugosi would go on to make quite a few pictures, including 11 silent movies and more than 75 sound pictures. After over 55 years of stage and screen acting, Lugosi passed away peacefully of a heart attack at age 73 on August 16, 1956. He was laid to rest in his full Dracula costume, including one of the capes. Bella was a great actor who starred in a number of roles other than the one that he's most best known for, of course, Dracula, which he... He did a fine job of that and set a stereotype for vampires for years to come. But he was in a lot of other great movies. He was in The Wolfman, where he played Bella, the fortune teller. And he was in... I uh, wonder if Madame Fortune knew him. Huh. But anyway, he was in... Let's see, he was in... He played Frankenstein in two different movies. And, and in one of the Frankenstein movies, actually two of the Frankenstein movies, he played... Uh, let's see, with Igor. Yeah, Igor, the, hun the hunchback lab assistant with the broken neck. It's really good. You ought to check out those out if you get a chance. I believe he was in Son of Frankenstein. So get that one. That's a great one. And while you're at it, as a matter of fact, I've got a few movies I want to recommend. Hmm, Madam Fortune's concoction here smells kind of good. Anyway, I've got a few movies I want to recommend for this Halloween. So uh, get your pen and paper and uh, let's do that. So you're looking for movies to rent. 
Well, let me tell you what Dr. Gangreen recommends. This Halloween, I recommend, first off, we'll do a list for kids. So, for children, I recommend, let's see, Frank and Weenie, the great Tim Burton classic. If you haven't seen this, a little bit short film, it's great. Check it out. Let's see, we'll do Frank and Weenie, and then maybe, uh, it's the great, Pump the great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, a perennial classic. You gotta watch that one. And then, perhaps, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, the animated version. Classic. Nothing more need be said. And let's see, maybe um, Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. And to round it out, the fifth movie, we'll say Evan Costello meet Frankenstein. You get Frankenstein, The Wolfman, and Dracula, play by Bella. You get all three. Can't beat that. Now, for the adult list, let's say The Frighteners, a modern one. That's a great movie. It's Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox is in that one. <laughs> He's good. Let's see, uh, very scary movie. Uh, that action pack. Got that one, Night of the Living Dead, a classic, Psycho, we reviewed that one a while back. Let's say Frankenstein for a classic, and last but not least, The Wolfman, where Bella plays Bella the Gypsy. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. And now, I promised you viewers that we were going to do a little extra something special tonight. Everything special here on Chiller Cinema, but tonight... I got something planned just for you. We're going to do a little home crafts that you can do some Halloween projects. So back to the attic lab we go. Come on. Well, here's something rather special. We have here the Vincent Price Shrunken Head Apple Sculpture Kit. <laughs> This was issued back in 1975, so if you were one of the lucky kids to pick up one of these things, you could shrink your own heads, and that's just exactly what we're going to do here tonight in the lab. <laughs> this kit includes everything you need to carve your own apples. Well, everything that is except for your apple and your carving tools, but fortunately I brought my own. Ah, now, uh, as you can see, I have my trusty chef hat here just for this home project. <laughs> Cooking with gangrene. Oh, 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 oh. oh, that could be a Saturday morning special, yeah. And if I had that, then that would be the show. I could take over the world. <laughs> but anyway, uh, now first step, we're gonna get back to carving this apple here. The first step, what you have to remember, there there's several different methods you can do to make your own apple shrunken heads here. But the first step is pretty much the same with all of them. So set these down. The first thing you'll need. Now, you kids out there, just remember, you need to ask for your parents' help. Don't try this alone. First thing, you get your apple, and the uh, the bigger the better, and you need a vegetable peeler. Okay, so you got your vegetable peeler here, and what you got to do is you got to take this skin off here, okay? And so go around here and uh, peel some of the skin off your off your apple, and you can leave a little bit at the top and bottom if you want. That'll look like hair when you get uh, when you get it all done here. But that's the first step. And then once you get that, we're gonna pretend like I got it here. But once you get that done, you're gonna need a knife now. What I suggest is a uh, regular butter knife, because if you use a sharp knife, it kind of tends to gouge in more than it does to, uh, to actually carve. But you're going to take this, and you're going to carve you out some shapes here. Like, you're going to carve you a basic eye and nose, and you're going to carve you a little mouth here. And We didn't really have time to show you all the actual uh, carvings here, so uh, what you do, just pretend like this is carved. You carve your face, get it the way you like it. Now, the next thing you have to do is you have to pickle your head. So what you got to do is you got to make up a solution. One cup of salt to four cups of water, okay? And you take your apple and you submerse it in that for 24 hours, all right? And after you get done with that, then comes the fun part where your apple actually becomes a little head. So what you do, you take it out, and I took the liberty of preparing this ahead of time. Check this out. better part two to three weeks and you'll have little shrunken heads check these out <laughs> take these little guys out little twins here I kind of like this one right here myself I've got this little nose going but you're gonna carve your face and make sure that you don't try try to carve it out with not gouge too much uh, you, you'll get real angular shapes, but anyway, they'll shrink up. These aren't fully shrunk yet. They'll they'll shrink a little bit more. And something also that you need to do, uh, it's rather humid here in Tennessee. So what you're going to need to do, I suggest you take your apple and you put it in your oven 
on, on the setting of 200 degrees for about an hour just to kind of take some of the moisture out and then take them out and set them someplace like in a windowsill or something where they can get some sunlight and just let them sit for two to three weeks and they'll shrink up you'll have you some nice little heads here. Vincent Price Apple Sculpture Kit came with a little plastic device that you attach to the top of a lamp that you would hang your head inside of and it actually shrunk the head off the heat of the lamp but it also came with a few other accessories such as hair and you can take this hair and you can attach it to your little shrunken head. Check that out. <laughs> it's this shrunken head. And also little beads you can attach to the hair and everything like that. But anyway, get you some fake hair like this and you can amaze your friends and astound your enemies. <laughs> so there it is. Cooking 101 right here on Chiller Cinema. I'm a good shot with it. <laughs>